<laughs> hey, what's up, Street Talks? There, Kim from there, Kim Street Talk Blog. Hi. Repping the Rico Mafia and Memento Mori. So, first and foremost, um, thank you so much for all your positive feedback on our previous videos. I think we're going to continue this Cinderic Haptic Industries uh, musings on life. This is another episode of the, the Haptic Show. So, this episode we want to talk about the Eric Kim line. So, first and foremost, it's a really, it's a really big deal for me because I feel like when you're attaching your real name to a product, it really is a reflection of that person, uh, that, the individual's personal aesthetics and also their belief in the product. So we currently have the Air Kim line and the Henri line. Cindy. <laughs> I have questions for oh, you. Oh, questions, questions, okay. <laughs> I was like, hey. Okay. So, okay, first question. I mean, you're kind of getting to it a little bit, but why did you want to make an Eric Kim line or Eric Kim collection? So besides the fact that I'm an eagle maniac and I love my name, I really, have a passion for design and I have a passion for equipment and tools. And like many of you guys, I have gas gear acquisition syndrome, which means I always want, I'm never satisfied with the equipment or the gear that I have. And I have very specific aesthetic qualities. I love simplicity, elegance, minimalism, and I'm trying to strive towards the most fashionable and functional design. So through the Air Kim line, I wanted to make products which actually empowers us photographers. So for example, one of my current new favorite products is the Air Kim Neck Strap Mark II, and I have it on the Ricoh GR2. We've all also made the Air Kim Wrist Strap Mark II, which is compatible with the Fujifilm XF10, which I'm a big fan of, as well as the new Air Kim uh, case, which is a good case to protect your XF10 or to protect your Ricoh GR2, as well as the Saigon Satchel, the Air <laughs> Kim portfolio bag, and some other products. So, Cindy, we currently have a lot of really cool products out there. What do you think makes the Air Kim line stand out from our other products? Yeah, so the Air Kim line is actually pretty fun in that the first core parts of the Air Kim line is the neck strap and the wrist strap. I have, so the wrist strap here. Um, but then we actually got really ambitious and creative. We're like, yeah, but what if we can make the perfect like case slash film holder? And then from there, we created the Eric Kim case. Um, just a little behind the scenes is we basically were iterating the Eric Kim case since we in, we created the Henri strap, which was three, which was well five years ago in development and then three years ago in production. Um, and a little sneak peek at behind the scenes. It's okay, I can hold it here. Mm -hmm. All right, so this was the first iteration of the Eric Kim case, which is so totally different than what it um, ended up being, which is like this. So we had thought, oh, um, like the original case concept would be more of like something that you can kind of put anything in, more like a pouch like this. But then over time, we started to like revisit this design um, and actually, I mean, re revisit the concept and just create a totally new design. Um, and you'll see like, the many prototypes we have like so uh if you uh, didn't hear in the other interview we work very closely with lan and Uyen, who are collaborators and creative uh artisans very talented leather artisans in saigon um, so they hand make the products and we work together with design and concept we also select the leather together and it's a very hands-on process so you can see like these are other prototype models of the eric kim case uh, so like, you know, the first model was like wrapped like this, but we're like, hmm, that's a little bit, it's a, it's a lot of movement. So let's continue to iterate and then let's, let's improve it. So then we decided to make just a simple movement here so that you can quickly, uh, access your camera. But the cool thing too, is that like we designed it so that you can actually loop this onto your bag, but also into your belt. We're not wearing belts, but <laughs> you can see essentially if you have like a belt, you can loop it in here and through, I don't know if you'll see from here, but you'll be able to loop, loop this onto your belt if you want to like have a quick kind of way of accessing your camera. And then finally, after around three to five years of development, we were able to release the two Eric Kim cases in bronze, this beautiful bronze color and in phantom black. And I think the thing that's really cool about the Air Kim case is that we made it optimized to fit the Rico GR2 as a case. So if you wanted a more protective case for your Rico, it fits in here perfectly. 
we've optimized it for that, of course. And also the cool thing too is that we've made a big innovation in the sense that you could see here in the front, you could actually insert two SD card slots. And I think we're too close. And also I put the autofocus to the wrong setting. Okay, so <laughs> I switched it. Okay, so and you could also see there's two little slots here which allow you to insert SD card slots. And so for example, can you pop this out real quick? So let's say we just have an SD card. I'm actually a big fan of the Transcend SD cards. But anyways, you take an SD card and you could fit it into here perfectly. And you could fit two of them in there. So it's also, it's fashionable and functional. And the thing that's really cool about the case too is that you could essentially put anything you want in the case. Currently, obviously, I put my Ricoh GR2 in here. And it fits the GR2 perfectly. You see it? So you can see the sides fold here. Closes here. And also the small details, like for example, this little bronze clasp and also the crimson red threading. Everything's handmade by artisan um, and friend Lan. And you can see how you could just close here simply and elegantly. And also small details, the crimson red threading, the sides, everything handmade. It's the most, it feels like a milky buttery leather. It's really quite beautiful. And furthermore, if you take out your, your camera, you could also film, fit in a 35 millimeter film, about five rolls as well as 120 film. And you could also see that uh, the new favorite camera I have at the moment, thanks to my buddy Aaron Fezzer, is the Fujifilm XF10. And it's about the same size as the Ricoh GR2. So this bad boy can also da, 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 fit in here nicely and beautifully and be super snug. Closing here, and once again, the simple mechanism of closing this. It's very beautiful and elegant. It feels super solid in the hand, and the leather just, it feels so nice, and it actually smells pretty good too. And close up on the bronze color, the bronze gold leather. It's so beautiful. Right, so let's uh, let's continue the show. Yeah, so I had actually a question to you. Yeah. Um, if okay, so you're you call this the Eric Kim line, this yeah. Eric Kim collection. Mm -hmm. um, were you ever afraid of attaching your name to something you created, or maybe like hesitant of doing that because, like, I mean, there's there aren't that many. First of all, there aren't that many photography brands. I mean, mm -hmm. there's like some some big brands out there, but they're they don't really they're kind of a little bit. Like Solis, it's not about like the person; it's about this brand. And yeah. then, like by you attaching your name, were you afraid that like all these haters would come up and be like, "Who are you to attach your name? You're not Louis Vuitton," or like, w were you afraid in any way? Um, actually, not at all. <laughs> I, <laughs> if I'm a uh, hundred percent honest, for myself, I was never afraid of attaching my name to it. If in fact. I already probably knew that people would criticize me. It's like, oh, you know, Eric, you're so arrogant to put your name on it. Like, who do you think you are? Do you think you're like super famous or important or whatever? But actually to me, it's really essential to put your name on the products you create because it's a badge of honor. It's a badge of respect and it's a badge of knowing that you actually believe in the product you use and that you're using your own product. Because obviously if somebody uses you know, an Air Kim strap or uses an Air Kim case or any sort of Air Kim product and like their camera breaks or something like that. Mm. I'm to be liable to it. So to me, it's actually the best way for me to put more skin in the game as Nassim Taleb says it. Because if I'm willing to stake my own reputation on my own products, I also have to deal with the negative consequences if there are any. Mm. So putting yourself out there by putting your name on your products. Yeah. Um, my other question too is then if I forgot my question <laughs> I forgot my question <laughs> well let me let me let me give you um, uh, a hand 
is all the products I create, essentially it fits my own personal lifestyle. So let me give you an example. For a while when I was living in Vietnam, you know, currently have, oh, I also have a haptic stick here. I have the 10.5 inch MacBook, uh, sorry, iPad Pro. And I had this dream, I'm like, can I live a life without having a laptop? So I actually had, I didn't have a laptop for about a year and I did everything on an iPad. And I was thinking to myself, if I had an ideal camera bag or bag in general for my iPad and my camera and stuff like that, what kind of bag do I want? And you know, not only do I want it to be functional, I also want to be fashionable. I mean, let's be real, as photographers, all of our camera stuff, it's kind of like fashion accessories. It's the closest thing we get to doing fashion accessories without buying a, a Louis Vuitton bag, right? So, wait, wait, wait. oh, not yet? We have to do an unboxing. Oh, we have to do an unboxing, <laughs> yes. okay. So, um, you know, I wanted to create the ideal perfect camera bag to fit my iPad, to fit my Ricoh GR2, and created... The Eric Kim Portfolio Bag. Uh -huh. So, this was also, like, yeah, a, a five-year-long development um, based off of Eric's lifestyle of using, like, super minimalist, just an iPad, only carrying the essentials, but also just looking good. So, we created the Eric Kim Portfolio Bag. Let's see. How should we do? I think the camera can see it from here. All right. So as you know, I love packaging and bags and, or packaging and boxes. And I love the idea that um, through Haptic and through creating Eric Kim, the Eric Kim collection, the Henri collection, that we can basically share the joy of um, unboxing and the magic of what's inside uh, and particularly creating creative tools to empower you. So this is the packaging for the Eric Kim case. Ooh. Made super limited edition. There's only, we made only, um, there's only three left in the shop. Wow. So pick one up before they run out. Um, so can you see? Okay, so um, this is, this concept's called Firoshiki, which is the Japanese art of, um, of wrapping gifts and also bento boxes and linen. So this is actually, we sourced this from Japan during our trip, so very meaningful to us. And we're going to open it. Uh, what I love about this packaging too is that you can reuse this to hold on to your other things as well. So here it is. Here is the Eric Kim case. Whoa. Or Eric Kim, sorry, Eric Kim portfolio bag. It's so beautiful. All right, so, Eric, do you want to demo it or should I? Oh, you should demo it. All right. It. So the, this is all made out of uh, brass components. So it's very durable, 100% leather. Everything is hand cut, um, handmade, hand stitched, which is makes it incredibly beautiful. We Ooh, have this, nice. more of this crimson red, um, little magnetic enclosure. So this is really nice because you could insert your phone in here. You can even actually insert a camera. It makes, it protrudes a little bit. It's best for like a camera, I mean, or sorry, a phone. a phone, I mean, a phone or a wallet or a pen. And so it comes with, let me move this. So it comes with two length straps. Um, Ooh. I'll, I'll put it on in a second, but I just want to show the detailed inside. So there's a two-tone color so that, you know, the great thing about um, having black products is like, then you can actually see, see yeah. everything. Um, and we designed this pocket here to perfectly fit your iPad. And we all, honestly, at this point, somebody has an iPad. <laughs> so yeah, so then how we design it, like you can put your phone out here or a pen. I think the or best, you take the Rico. yeah, the best format here is like you can put your Rico, your other camera inside as well. Hmm. So, and then you can put street notes or in a notebook or whatnot in here as well. So you have your, all of your essentials. So it's a super ambitious bag because we, even though we're minimalist, I think we also sometimes try to optimal, optimize and try to create this for everything. So we're like, okay, so it's a portfolio bag, which portfolio, we think of like portfolios that artists hold. So we wanted to create it that you can actually have it and wear it like something like, just kind of like held, like a portfolio under your arm or you can hold it um, very quick or uh, have a more traditional messenger style. So again, this is all brass. So over time, it's going to wear beautifully. This is all handmade. So can you I, show the the clasping mechanism? Yeah. So here we are. It's beautiful. Um, it's here. Attach 
connected to the other side. So what's cool is, yeah, so this is a messenger style. So this is, it might look a little bit long on me because it's optimized more for men and for, for Eric, technically. But you can wear it kind of on the side. You can wear a traditional messenger, which is how a lot of people wear it. Um, if you feel, if you can kind of wear it in your front too, you could adjust this to make it super short too. Can you show how we adjust yeah, it? Yeah, so this is brass, it's so beautiful. So you can adjust it. Um, and make it really short if you'd like. So it's just pretty short here. And then it's looking cool. And then if you wanted to wear it more, like, like higher, if you were on a guy, it would look a little bit higher. It would look more like this. Or you can like have it really close to you if you want to just like, you know, quickly be able to like grab your camera and whatnot. The fun um, other design of this it, that was a creative um, innovation is the super short strap. Ooh. So, I mean, you can technically wear, have both straps on at the same time. So let's just demo that. So you can, this is a super short strap. And you're like, why would you want a super short strap? But I know that some people are on the road and traveling. So maybe they might feel this is a, like, want some extra sense of security. So you can wear it with two straps. And you can essentially have this, and then you can have this as a short strap and super close to you. And I've worn this sometimes in like sketchy areas um, in Saigon or when that, so it's like just super close and essentially it's like very much strapped onto me. Um, and it's, it's, it's really creative because then you can also, now I'm removing the, the longer strap and then just using short strap. So the short strap you can also just like kind of hold, grab. Um, if you're kind of like on the go and you just want to grab something really fast. Um, I, what was cool when Eric was designing this was that he made it quite androgynous which I thought was really fashion forward because I know mm. that um, I mean there's a large photography market and mm, some people might say this looks like a women's purse but in all honesty, women's purses are the most functional, useful thing that any and everyone should have some type of bag to carry on. Wait, let, let, let's uh, let's switch. Yeah, let's you, switch. Yeah, so I think this is actually very uh, very cool too because let's be honest, when it comes to bags and products, we want it to be more fashionable, and I also wanted to change the culture because you know with men, you know, you men need big bulky backpacks. But I'm like, no, like why not have elegant bags which are simple and minimalist and sexy so generally even speaking like i would actually wear the bag like this and then you know unfortunately in america we're so homophobic it's like oh you know that bag looks gay or whatever like that but to me it's actually it's really elegant and actually i think it's actually a proof of your masculinity if you wear a bag that looks more quote quote feminine and you know just kind of rock it with pride and once again i have my own skin in the game I've been using this bag forever when I was in Vietnam every single day and I got so many compliments on it both from men and women and also for you photography travelers once again I think a lot of people spend money on bags which are like more secure so once again we have two of the claps clasps so you could clasp this here and the reason why we chose beautiful brass components they are more expensive but they're a hundred times more durable and they also reflect the brass of the leica camera which i'm obviously a big fan of and so over time it just wears more beautifully it has a beautiful sheen to it and furthermore when you're able to use both straps and then it could uh, adapt to your own personal lifestyle so here i am putting on both straps and so let's say you're traveling like cindy mentioned and you want, you know, you're in a country that, you know, you're kind of worried that someone might steal your stuff. You could have it on both sides because this way, if someone tries to yank your bag, you know, they can't just quickly yank it because you have double the protection. So once again, it's a very beautifully fashionable bag in the sense that all this, all the details are made with love. The, the leather just feels milky smooth. Also these brass components are quite bold and elegant at the same time. And they just, 
it's just a beautiful bag and once again it's a product that will age beautifully the more you use it with the wabi sabi aesthetics which means the more you use it the more beautiful it becomes because with leather products you know your own personal oils and your remnants of your own personal experiences and your adventures are going to wear with the bag i think i don't know about you but i'm totally sick of all these mass manufactured products which have no soul to them no sex to them and isn't it kind of cool like to have that pride that you have a one-of-a-kind bag that is starts to be tailored to you over time the more you use it and to be able to show off to other people that oh you don't just have another random camera bag but you have your own thing which is actually really unique and actually one thing i wanted to talk about cindy is i think the question a lot of people often have is and it's something i'm curious is like what does handmade handcrafted even mean at this point because i feel that there's so many of these buzzwords like, oh, everything is artisanal and organic and non-GMO and stuff like that. So let me switch and then ask you, Cindy. Oh, yeah. So handmade. Um, that's a really important question. And I think in some ways it's it's also a philosophy. Like for us, we approach it from a philosophical and practical aspect. So the practical side is handmade it means that it's not mass produced. It's not machine produced. Um, and it... When it comes to our leather products, it means like each part is like hand cut, hand sewn, um, hand uh, the brass attachments are hand uh, hammered together. Um, and the other aspect, the philosophical aspect, is that for us, handmade also is a a way of thinking about. Um, so haptic products are, you know, if you've support happened again many of you have thank you so much is that you've been really supporting me and eric and um by supporting me and eric you're also we work very closely with lan and win um so they set the wages and we participate in like very fair ethical um labor practices um and we like court like talk every day so that we are like very hands-on in the process and then by supporting them and us you're also supporting our family it's a whole like family endeavor my mom helps she was just helping me um, like sew some of the packaging together the this the stuff uh, my sister also helps to ship uh, our products when I'm on the road uh, which is kind of often so I really appreciate her for that uh, the other aspect is just on a detail oriented things is that like so this was so here this is the evolution of the eric kim strap eric kim wrist strap if you can see these are some of our prototypes uh, this is our own one you can tell like eric's been wearing it out um, and this is the the mark one and we just released the mark two which is here right and what's this in the middle here this is actually the fujifilm strap that came with the xf10 and i mean it's a fine strap and i mean it's again like we're not saying you have to buy a handmade strap but if you want the aesthetic or artisanal um, experience this is what the big difference is so i mean it functions it's fine but you'll see that like if how our straps are made are so um will look completely different first of all like i am not even sure if this is leather i think this feels more like this is actually probably a pleather plastic so what happens is it's not going to first of all develop like i don't know there's like some glue on it it's already coming off but so it's not gonna develop like patina over time. It's not gonna look more beautiful. You'll see that like we, what we did in our design um, philosophy is that we kept things rough, is that we want it to look as human as possible. So like, for example, I don't know if you can see but the edges of this, but you can see that it's definitely hand cut because we left this looking exposed. What, is, what does hand cut mean? So that means that you have a, have a ruler and then you basically cut with a knife through the leather and compared to like, you can tell like this piece of leather is really really thick whereas if you look at the side of this this pleather fujifilm one this fake leather fujifilm one you can't even see how thick the leather is because it's also sewn with a fabric thing so that it won't chafe but what's beautiful about real leather is that the inside of leather is beautiful it's like quite soft and it's i mean leather it's 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 from animals, so it's it's soft, it's human, it's I mean it's it's living, so it's very beautiful in that way. The stitching is also another aspect that you can tell with handmade differences. Is that while I mean machines are great, kind of we believe in technology, and you'll have these like really nice, perfect stitch machine 
you know, lines and stitching, but then you kind of lose the human aspect. So here, if it's, if it's handmade, then you'll see the stitching holes are usually wider and bigger. And here we also, you might even see kind of a little bit of like variation or Micro, micro irregularities or machines might say they're, they're human imperfections, which we love. Like, I think that's what makes us human is that each one is unique and different because they are handmade. Yeah. So uh, can you maybe just give us uh, a preview on how you could loop this to oh, yeah. XF10? Yeah. So, so this is the XF10, which is, as Eric's been talking about a lot, one of the, the big contenders with the Rico. Dun, dun, dun. Um, the one thing about it is that it doesn't. It only has one loop, so it only can handle a uh, wrist strap. We focus on that. Yeah, so it's enough light. Yeah, so this is. It can handle a wrist strap, and the loop is actually quite small. So you, um, actually, this strap is is better. Our Eric Kim wrist strap mark two is actually better than the one that comes with the Fuji, because the Fuji one you can tell the looping part is like really short, so it makes it very difficult. So here we are looping. Um, so you can loop it here. Oops. So as I'm looping, I always get nervous on these videos. <laughs> Do you have any good like pro tips on like looping technique? Because uh, oh yeah, because because like sometimes like with slippery hands, it can get difficult. Um, I think I mean there's like a few methods you can do. You can actually like use floss to help to loop it. Eric, do you want to do? Oh, that? it's okay. Just just keep going for it. All right, I'm gonna commit. Because honestly, when it comes to putting on camera straps, especially these little string ones it's usually kind of a nightmare to put on the first time around because you know you have to keep trying sometimes your hands are sweaty and sometimes Eric, you know, the conditions aren't good but generally speaking the the nice thing is once you put it on you don't obviously have to take it off and put it on again and generally sometimes what even I'll do is I'll put my spit on it to make it actually yeah, a little bit more robust so let's not do it on this right, time but well we could we could switch so yeah, let's switch. I'm like shaky. <laughs> Cindy gets nervous on camera. I do get nervous. Yeah, so generally speaking, I would recommend sitting down on a flat surface, finding the corner that actually suits you well. I just usually hold it in about a quarter of the way. And you put it on the table. You just kind of loop it there. And it's, a lot of it is just kind of finessing it. So you just when I do it, I just kind of stick it in. Then the center. I just gen gently, gently nudge what? it through. How did you Whoa, first shot. Like Cindy, that? I out-threaded you, I, right? Oh my god. So you thread that all the way, then you just take the long end of the strap, you know, tie the loop. You remember when you were a kid and you're learning how to tie your shoes, right? Kind of like that. You're just showing off. Yeah, so I'm just kind of <laughs> showing off at this point. So you just kind of attach it like yay. And bada bing, bada boom, you have it attached. And the best way to use the Kim wrist strap is obviously stick your wrist through it. And immediately when you're wearing it on your wrist, it feels nice and robust and solid. And furthermore, we designed this beautiful bronze component here. So I usually use my middle finger and my ring finger to use this to just kind of slide this through here. And also I made the the stitching kind of this nice like golden yellow to just kind of be a nice accent to the camera so once you hold it here obviously you could just kind of swivel it around and then generally i'll just kind of hold this in my hand so it's just additional protection i don't know about you i got butter fingers i'm like whoop 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 i often could drop my stuff so it's just kind of a nice uh accompaniment to your camera i think it just generally just kind of also look looks cooler and sexier way sexier than the default strap which i consider quite ugly and the thing that I love about the XF10, if it's the pocket test, fits in your front pocket. And the best camera is the one that could fit in your front pocket. And you can kind of see your strap will fashionably dangle out of your pocket, which is actually pretty convenient because if you want to take your camera out of the bag, you just grab the strap and then yank it out quickly. And also when you're shooting with it, the more you use it, obviously the more comfortable the strap will get because it'll mold to you. And yeah, this is, uh, I consider the most beautiful strap ever made in human history for the XF10. So what are some other questions, Cindy, did you have about the XF10 uh, or the line? Uh, no, I think, uh, 
I think maybe we could just kind of wrap up. All right, so our last final question is uh, why buy anything from the Eric Kim line or from the haptic shop? So the reason why you should buy the Eric Kim strap is first and foremost, there are really no straps which are compatible with either the Rico GR2, and this is the Eric Kim neck strap, because there's this weird little, that little loop thing I showed you earlier. It's not compatible with most uh, standard straps, and most people, most photographers, are not using the Rico GR2 or the Fujifilm XF10. And, you know, I've shot with my $10,000 Leica, and I like these little point and shoots even better in a lot of ways in terms of everyday shooting. So I wanted to create the most beautiful product for both the Ricoh GR2 and the XF10. And also I'm a user. So I think the issue is with a lot of other camera companies, these guys designing these straps, they're not users. And furthermore, they're not designers. They don't have the same design aesthetic as we do that we love simple, minimalist, and beautiful design. That's one thing. Second thing is that it's artisanal, which means it's literally one of a kind. It's not just mass produced in some sort of like rando factory in China. And I think it's it's a little bit sad that, you know, when you say, oh, it's made handcrafted in Saigon, they're like, oh, you know, you got some like random Vietnamese kids in some factory somewhere. It's like, no, like our friend Lan, she's like this beautiful like model. She's like 28 years old. She sings, she, she does music videos. She's like really styling. And literally, I mean, this is hard to understand, right? Because most of us have not seen things that are handmade. Every single strap, like she starts off with a thick piece of leather. She literally has like an exacto knife or something and she cuts everything by hand. She's stitching it literally by hand, which means all the stitching you see, she has a thread and needle and she's literally stitching it. And so the soul of the artisan, AKA Lan, comes through through the product. And furthermore, we have iterated the design for the last two years, which means that all the small subtle details which go into the strap, so like even, the loop here being a triangular shape, even the bronze components. And we're constantly uh, upgrading the products to make the best possible strap for you. And ideally, we want the strap to make you more bold as a photographer for you to go on more adventures because a camera that's not shot is a useless camera. And I do believe that, you know, obviously a strap's not gonna make you a better photographer, but if the strap is fashionable and functional enough that you could wear your camera with you every single day, everywhere you go and it integrates part of your lifestyle, you'll shoot more photos. And the more photos you shoot, the happier you'll be and the more empowered you'll be as an artist. And the last thing too, and this is just you know something we appreciate a lot is, um, obviously you work hard to earn your money at your job or whatever you do. Rather than giving your money to some sort of big anonymous corporation, like why not help you know small people like me and Cindy? Because obviously we need to pay our rent, we need to, uh, pay our expenses and for us the goal isn't to make a trillion dollars the goal is to make enough money through haptic to continue to pay our rent for us to continue to put out free information on the blog to make more youtube videos and also hopefully give some ideas to empower other artists so every single purchase you buy through haptic hapticindustries.com directly helps me and cindy not just some random thing and once again if you don't understand haptic industries it's literally a company made by Cindy. Haptic is Cindy. So anytime you order a product on the Haptic Industries store, hapticindustries.com, Cindy gets an email notification saying somebody has ordered this and it shows the PayPal payment. She gets super excited. And then the first thing she starts doing is wrapping the products and then she gives the products to me. She puts on the stamps and the, the printing labels. I literally take the package. I drive to the post office. I stick it inside the post off this box and also cindy often uses like puts a little personal little notes on it too so it's like a real it's just like it's just us two so it's once again um thank you so much to all, all of uh, all you guys who have helped support us through your purchases i forget who said it but um uh, one of our supporters said uh, i want to show my support through my books like pay with your support what was, what was, I, uh, what was, what was it saying portland um, um, I vote with my dollar. Ah, I vote for with my dollar. Um, oh, um, yeah, so the idea is that you vote with your dollars. So, you know, thank you so much for your support and every single product and purchase you buy has the Air Kim stamp of approval and also the Cindy kiss of love. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Thank if you're you. interested in more of our products, hapticindustries.com, 
or just go to the Eric Kim blog and click the shop link or just Google Eric Kim shop or whatever. Uh, I'll include a link in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching, guys. Peace out. Bye-bye. Thank you.